everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skincare, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training in anything, I just have people asking questions sometimes about different things, so I decided to start a YouTube channel to share my thoughts. And of course I get two itches as soon as I start a video. Um, all right, so today what I wanted to talk about is my first pinup style photo shoot. Um, and so um, a friend of mine uh, did a fundraiser before the plague started. Um, for her friend who had uh, a traumatic, uh, some with a traumatic brain injury, which is horrible. Um, and uh, I ended up, you know, doing the silent raffle and, and winning this pinup style photo shoot. So that is pretty cool. Um, uh, I started to email the um, photography studio after the plague started to kind of calm down a little bit um, to see sort of what my options were. Cause like, I don't know, like, do I have to provide my own hair and makeup? Do I have to provide my own wardrobe? Can I do any theme that I want? Can I, like, I don't know how this whole thing works. And so I start emailing um, the photo studio and uh, this woman responds to me. It turns out she's the photographer. She has sort of like a stage, stage name for her photography studio. And um, you know, basically um, um, she has a whole bunch of pinup style shoots that she does throughout the year and you can kind of sign up for one of those. Um, and so, uh, by the way, the pinup style is a very sort of uh, cutesy style. Um, it never sort of reveals everything about, you know, a person, it's usually women in these photo shoots um, or in these, uh, there's cartoons of them as well. Um, they really became prevalent in the 40s with World War II. And um, so they've kind of, they've progressed through the years. Um, you know, people, people still seem to want to do them like the whole retro thing. And so a pretty stereotypical, um, you know, pinup style photo is going to usually be like with a car. That's pretty common. A um, little pair of short shorts, you know, a little, a little top that like shows a good amount of cleavage and those like victory rolls, you know, those, those cool rolls that kind of go back in that, uh, that women's hairstyle. Um, and so that's, and you know, a face kind of like, you know, one of those types of faces. Um, and so that's, that's all pretty common for a pinup style shoot. And so I had asked the woman, um, you know, do I have any other options besides sort of those things? Um, because she did have a couple of shoots that were that were upcoming. Um, one was a pretty, you know, typical styled thing with like the cars. There was something about like being in space that was coming up and like they just, they weren't my cup of tea. And she's like, well, what were you thinking? And I said to myself, well, um, back when uh, I was still going to an office for work, um, a physical office, I still work for the same company, um, Halloween was a big deal. And so we would dress up every year and any costume that I do not have to wear a wig for is a good costume for me because I have a ton of hair. And so um, one year I was Ariel. So I got um, a, a skirt that kind of looks like a tail. It's got like the scalloping on it for the, um, for the scales. And um, uh, I got a purple tank top that I could tuck into it because the skirt came up pretty high, like right under my rib cage. So I figured that's, that's good for work, right? And so I told her about the tail and the purple tank top and she's like, yeah, that sounds great. I'm like, okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I go to New Orleans and I literally like the plane lands, I turn my phone on. And um, the woman had asked me, she's like, I'm gonna try to make you a seashell bra. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like that, you don't have to do that. And she's like, no, I wanna do it. I'm like, okay. So I get back from New Orleans, I look at my phone. She sends me this picture. This is like the coolest looking seashell bra I've ever seen in, in like real life. And I was like, this is so cool. And she's like, I'm gonna mail it to you. And I'm like, you, she, this person is over an hour away from me. I'm like, you don't have to, you don't have to mail it to me. I can meet you halfway or something. This must be expensive. And she's like, no, no, I'll mail it. You try it on. I'm like okay because otherwise I'm gonna have to provide my own wardrobe that was another reason I didn't want to do one of these other shoots is because uh, I don't have that type of clothing um, I, I'm very particular about the types of things that I like I'm usually like sort of conservative with how I dress um, and so um, so I just didn't have anything that would fit that like I could probably sew something up or edit something because I do know how to sew but I, you know, I, I liked, I wanted to do the Little Mermaid thing, so I, I was happy she went along with that. Um, and then I get this seashell bra, and it's like, it's really cool. Um, I did have to get an extender because the way the shells were glued on, the bra lost some of its elasticity, so it didn't quite fit. But once I got the extender, it was perfect. It was amazing. Um, so that's super cool. And so now, um, all I had to do was sort of prepare for the day. And so um, hair and makeup, it turns out, was included with the package that I got. And um, what I did have to do though is like, the, the paperwork that came in the mail said to, you know, um, sort of prepare like you're going on a really good date. So like, shave everything you wanna shave, pluck everything you wanna pluck. If you have to color your hair, get highlights or whatever, like make sure all of that is done like right before the shoot is, is meant to happen. I'm like, okay. Um, so even though I'm gonna be in a skirt, I'm gonna be in a tail, you know, I still kind of prepped myself. I did my nails too in like a, a dark inky green color. 
Um, and so, you know, really the last thing to do is actually drive to the shoot. And so this particular photographer, um, she tends to shoot sort of in different places, but like her regular spot is actually a Capoeira studio. So I drove out to this Capoeira studio um, and it was raining, but that's, that's fine because I just, you're supposed to show up with clean, dry hair, um, you know, just doing whatever it does. And, um, you know, no makeup, maybe just a little bit of moisturizer or sunblock or something. Um, so that's what I did. And I brought my tail and I brought my bra and I brought, you know, the whole thing. Um, so I get there and uh, one person is doing my hair and makeup and one person is the photographer setting up the shoot. Um, so while the photographer is setting up, that's when I start doing my hair and makeup. Let me tell you, this hair and makeup artist, she was so knowledgeable. She um, was really cool. She was really good at her job. Um, and so uh, I asked her a couple of questions. So number one, what skin tone do I actually have? Because I think I have neutral skin, but like, I don't, look at all the redness that's in my skin right now. Granted, I got a little more sun this weekend than I probably should have. Um, and I did not realize my regular sunblock for my face is SPF 30. I usually go a little higher if I'm actually like out in the sun. This is, this is like my tan basically. Um, so I asked her, I'm like, I, I don't know. And so when she used, you know, put my foundation on, she's like, I used a yellow based foundation on you. She's like, you're so pale. Everybody that's pale thinks that they have cool toned skin but a lot of people don't. You have to look at the, the skin that's over here and see like what the undertones are there, which is a lot more sort of yellowy. So she used a yellow based foundation um, on me, which she mixed by the way, like she mixed a bunch of colors together and got my foundation. Um, and she did that very quickly for every color that she used on me, which was like, I know this is, you know, they're professionals, this is what they're supposed to, but I was just, my mind was blown. Um, and so, um, yeah, so uh, she starts putting the, the makeup on me and it just kind of feels like, they're, they're doing this to your face. It doesn't really feel like you're getting anything sort of significant. Um, and then you look in the mirror and you're like, oh. Um, because, you know, she did, she ended up doing like a, um, I'm gonna show you a picture of the makeup. Um, sort of a, 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 a smoky eye kind of thing. Um, she let me pick my own eyelashes. And this lipstick that she put on, this lipstick did not go anywhere until I wanted to take it off. Um, I don't know what kind of lipstick it was. It came off incredibly easy with um, makeup remover and like a cotton ball. Um, but it was really, it was really phenomenal. And so another thing that I asked her is, um, how do I get makeup to not look like, like, um, you know, everybody has hairs on their face, men, women, everybody. Um, and so, um, uh, how do I get it to look like I'm not, I don't have, like have a beard basically, because that's one reason I don't wear makeup every day, um, like on my face face. The I mean, my eyes, I wear makeup under here. I have mascara on today. I have my eyebrow mascara, that's all. And lip gloss, that's all I have on. Um, and so uh, she told me two things. One is to make sure you use a primer um, all the time. And the other is to make sure you're pushing the makeup into your skin. So people think that like, oh, airbrush is the new technology. Everybody wants airbrush. And it's like, she's like, no, airbrush is gonna make that makeup stand out so much on your face. Um, so she basically said to think about like, what do drag queens do? And drag queens use brushes and they use um, they use sponges, there's the cat, um, and they really press it into their faces. So that's what I should be doing as well to not see those little hairs on my face. Um, so then the, the makeup probably took um, about an hour and the hair probably took like 20 minutes because um, even when I don't do anything to my hair, it's, it's pretty malleable, it's pretty easy to work with. So um, it didn't take that much time to get my mermaid waves. Um, and so, uh, so then I went over to where the um, photographs are actually gonna be taken. So the photographer had set up basically this giant white sheet um, and uh, it had a couple of different sort of light sources because I'm gonna be underwater. Um, there was a blue light as well as white lights and um, she had a couple of props for me as well, which is great. So she had um, sort of an orb that could be like flounder, you know, um, uh, or it, you know, it could be a pearl or it could be a bubble or whatever, but it was something I could like hold and like gesture and you know, whatever. Um, and the other uh, prop she had for me was a dingle hopper. So if you've seen The Little Mermaid, um, Ariel, uh, she's, she's a mermaid, and she goes in this shipwreck um, and finds a fork um, and she thinks it's to comb her hair. And so when she gets on land, she goes to a, a dinner table and sees a fork on the table and starts combing her hair with the fork. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. And then she, then she stops because she realizes no one else is combing their hair with a fork. Um, so it, it, you know, it was cute to do some, some shots with the dingle hopper. So um, the, the biggest sort of um, technique suggestion that I was given by the photographer, this, this to me was like a game changer for these kind of pictures, is to cycle through um, the vowels in English with your, your facial structure. So um, A, E, I, O, U. 
right? So if you cycle through all of those, you're gonna get some, some cute expressions and the bottom half of your face is sort of covered from a pinup style here. Um, another sort of issue that I had is because a lot of the pinup poses, you're using your legs. Um, I'm wearing a tail, so I can't really split my legs up. So I had to do a lot with my arms. So what ended up happening is, um, you know, I was really focused on my face um, and I was focused on my arms. I was not focused on my core at all. So um, everything kind of, you know, uh, I just, I, I didn't have good posture, basically. <laughs> so there's a couple things in posts that are gonna have to be edited because because I just I wasn't standing up straight because I was so focused on the rest of my body. Um, and so, uh, you know, if anybody's ever seen America's Next Top Model, I was trying to, you know, do the smize and all that kind of thing. Um, and I've actually, I've done a, a decent, um, like more modeling than you would think, um, but in the past, so when I worked retail and we had little modeling um, exercises for to show our, our clothes in the mall, I would do those runway shows in the mall. Um, I dated a photographer when I was uh, in college and he was only like a year older than me. He was just getting started. He wanted like a portrait model. And so I volunteered to be a portrait model. Um, weirdly for that portrait photo shoot, uh, the hardest thing for me was keeping my eyes open. And I remembered that very clearly. And so uh, I wanted to make sure I could keep my eyes open through the photo shoot. Um, or, you know, as, as open as I could, because you can't keep your eyes open all the time. That's not how the human body works, but I wanted to make sure I had enough shots to, to choose from. And so, you know, I, I, I get on set. Um, and so there were um, a bunch of different positions I did. So first I was just standing um, and I didn't do that for too long because I'm still having this issue with my leg where I can't like stand or walk for a super duper long time. So um, hopefully that's going away. And um, I'm in physical therapy, it's the whole thing. And so um, we did some of those. Then uh, there was a high stool. Then there was a low like ottoman looking thing. Then I laid on the ground with sort of propped up with a, the top third of me propped up a little bit with my arms. And then um, uh, she took some portrait shots. So like I was laying on the ground with like my hair out and the shots were coming from this direction. Um, I love this photographer. She's super nice, super accommodating, super lovely. Um, but she was shooting a lot of shots from below. And so my uh, things that I'm most self-conscious about are my tummy and under here with my chin. And so think about like when you open your phone from below and you're like looking at yourself, like that's kind of what I felt like I was going to look like. I was scared it wasn't gonna look the way I wanted it to look. I like a particular angle when I take my pictures. Um, and so she, she understood this concern and she was very lovely and accommodating. And I actually was the one to ask for sort of the portrait style shots. Um, and uh, I think that grouping ended up being my favorite at the end of the day. There's a lot of them that are super duper fantastic. Um, I'm gonna show you one by the end of the video. Um, but, but I think those in general were, were my favorite overall as a group. Um, and so, uh, you know, I had the dingle hopper, I had the, the orb, um, and the, the, the actual shoot itself probably took like half an hour. Um, and so this woman, she took over 500 pictures of me, which is crazy. Um, because apparently you don't usually get that many, that many shots. Um, and of course this was something that was given for charity. Um, she did show me a couple in the studio. I was like, oh, this is exciting. But, you know, it's a little tiny, little tiny screen. I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, and so really uh, after that, the only thing left to do was to, to head home. Um, because this was donated, um, I had asked in the email correspondence earlier, like, do you guys take tips? Like, what's the deal with that? And she's like, well, tips are, you know, welcome, but they're not necessary by any means. And they donated their time, they donated their expertise. They don't, I'm like, I, I have, I love this experience. I have to give these women a tip. Um, and so I tipped each of them $40 because I'm assuming that, you know, they did at least $200 of work, each of them. So um, I, I'm hoping that was okay. Um, and so, um, you know, so I, I get home and uh, that makeup, again, it stayed on until I took it off. It was very, um, very sticky as it were. Um, and so a couple days later, the photographer sent me my test shoot. And so basically she has a website and I sign up to the website to uh, make an account. And then, um, you know, a couple days, a couple weeks, whatever later, um, she would send me my gallery link so I could log in and I could pick the pictures I wanted because with the package that I have, I get five pictures that are edited and everything to keep. Um, and if I want any more of them, it's $20 per picture, which I think is very reasonable. And so, um, um, I did get that gallery actually a couple of days ago, but um, uh, they don't like to show pictures that aren't like fully edited um, because it's just a white screen in the background as well. Like there's not like, so I'm not gonna show the unedited ones, but I got a teaser picture that she picked and edited um, with, the, with the theme. Um, and so I'm going to show you that, all right? So here we go. 
Um, so um, another thing that happened, by the way, my hair, the reason my hair is like like that and it sort of looks like it's in the water is because the hair and makeup woman, she actually, um, for a bunch of shots, she had the hair dryer and it was blowing up. <laughs> we had like an angle of it blowing up so that my hair would do that in the picture so it kind of looked like I was underwater. Um, I was really proud of myself that uh, when you look at those shots, I don't have a ton with my eyes closed. My eyes are open in most of them. So I was, I was very excited about that. Um, and so, um, so yeah, this is, I mean, I know what I look like in the mirror. I've seen myself on video a million times. Um, and so this, this, I mean, this picture is, there's not a ton of editing done on this picture. Um, so I'm really, I'm really happy with it. And so I think if this is something that you're looking for to kind of boost your self-esteem, um, I think you should do it because it's, it's really fun. Um, and it's different. It's getting out of your comfort zone, all that good stuff. Um, and it turns out fun little bonus. This photographer is affiliated with a pinup style magazine. And there is a Disney theme. Uh, the deadline for the Disney theme is in about three days. And so my pictures are going to be in a pinup style magazine for Ariel. So um, at least I'm pretty sure they are. So that's that's pretty cool that I'm, I'm going to be in a magazine. So now a published model, not professional uh, by any means, but published. So that'll, that'll be cool. Hopefully it happens. Um, like it's, it's like 95% sure that it's going to happen, not 100%. Um, but still, a really cool concept, really cool photo shoot. I'm really going to treasure these pictures um, and treasure the experience. It was it was really, really lovely. So if this is something that you've thought about doing, I would definitely recommend doing it. So if anybody has any questions, you can put them in the comments section down below. And I hope you have a super awesome rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.